Welcome to another fantastic show titled, What's Up in the City? My name is Milt Franco, the co-anchor today, and I have another co-anchor, and his name is... Ken Farmer. Ken Farmer. And Ken Farmer is the chief of police right here in Bella Vista. And what this show is about for you newcomers is we talk a little bit about what's happening in the way of police protection and the rules and regulations of the road right here and in and around Bella Vista. And Ken is an encyclopedia of information on that topic. And that reminds me also that if any of you viewers out there have a question you'd like for me to ask Ken on one of our future shows, just call us here at 855-4040. And if there is no live answer, just leave a message on the phone and we'll be sure to include that in next month's questions. All right. All right, with you, Ken. Yeah, that's good. And uh, one of the questions that was asked this week of me was, uh, where does the money go that people pay for fines? Okay. The money from uh, getting a ticket will go several places. Uh, the fine money actually comes back to the city of Bella Vista. Uh, then there is a court cost that is assessed, and there are other fees that are assessed on some on all tickets, some on other other cost of tickets. One of the one of the things that's assessed on our tickets is a five dollar fee on each citation mm -hmm. to help us pay our county jail bill. Oh, okay. But uh, uh, the fine money does come back to the city, and. Uh, it's not a money-making proposition by any means uh, because the city has to enter in an agreement to uh, fund part of the court where oh, our citations okay. are written. So uh, the amount of money we get back from tickets just about covers what we have oh. to pay for the court. So okay. it's kind of almost a break-even situation. You know, that just brings up a point here too when you talked about we had to support the jail <clears throat> since we don't have a jail here. Right. And we arrest people here from time to time and they have to be confined, then we have to pay for their rental yes. of that space. Yeah, we pay, uh, we pay the county jail uh, $40 a day mm -hmm. to house an inmate for us. Uh, we're required to pay on any inmates who are arrested for misdemeanor violations. Mm -hmm. uh, if we arrest someone on a felony like a burglary or, or something like that, then that they are what's called a state prisoner because mm -hmm. it's, a, uh, it's a more serious charge, so we don't have to pay for those. If a person is arrested that committed a crime here in Bella Vista, but they're arrested, let's say, in St. Louis or another city in the United States, <clears throat> and you're going to extradite them to bring them back here, yes. do we have to pay for their care while they're incarcerated there? Typically not. Oh, okay. Uh, and we don't, uh, we don't go to St. Louis to pick them up. Mm. Uh, the only way we would uh, extradite anyone is on a felony charge. Mm -hmm. And uh, limits of extradition on felony charges are decided by the prosecuting attorney's office. Oh, uh, okay. But, so it's, it's not an automatic. If somebody has a real low grade uh, offense mm -hmm. that is a felony, they will make a decision as to whether or not we will extradite them and how far we will extradite them. Okay. Uh, then they uh, arrange transportation with the county sheriff's office. They do the, uh, the extradition. The only exception there might be to that rule is that if we have someone housed very close, like say in McDonald or Berry County, Missouri, over around uh, Delaware County, Ottawa County, Oklahoma, somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, that's uh, just a few miles away, we might handle the extradition on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, do you have to send, do we have to send an officer? <clears throat> To accompany that prisoner back? They do send an officer to accompany the prisoner, but, uh, uh, you know, they, they're the ones providing the transportation, too. Oh, so, okay. And normally, uh, it's, it's just good practice that if you're on a uh, lengthy transport like that, you use two officers mm. to uh, just keep problems from happening. Okay, yeah. okay. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that changes the subject a little bit then. <clears throat> Um, someone was talking to me about some of the cul-de-sacs in the village here that aren't traveled very frequently right. uh, have been used for dumping grounds for various carpenters and, mm -hmm. and people who have a little bit of trash. Um, how, how does the police department keep up with that? And, and uh, let's talk about that's, that's not a privilege here in Arkansas. You, that is, you can be fined. You can be fined for that. And uh, 
we do take um, uh, action on any reported trash dumping mm -hmm. that we get. Uh, if it's if it's somewhere we can identify mm -hmm. who uh, who dumped it or whose pro whose trash it is, then we follow up on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Arkansas, there's a maximum of thousand dollar fine for uh, for dumping where you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know it, it's bad for the ecology, it's bad for the community, and uh, we take a, a pretty damn view of it and we follow up aggressively on those. Mm -hmm. uh, we do. Um, Normally, if it's a person's first offense, uh, we'll give them an opportunity to clean the trash up before we cite them. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a one-time offer. After that, they ought to know that they can't dump, and uh, they can s expect a ticket any time after that. Okay. <clears throat> well, now I know there <clears throat> probably are a few newcomers here in the village, and even even some of the senior people who've never had that problem. But. Yeah. You know, every once in a while a tree will go down in your yard or you get some trash in your yard and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you've got a trailer and you can haul it anywhere. Yeah. And is there a place here in Bella Vista that you are permitted to take that and dump it? Yes, there are, uh, there are a couple of places depending on the, um, depending on the debris. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's limbs and leaves and things like that, the, the Property Owners Association operates a couple of stump dumps. Mm. And uh, you can get the locations of those just by calling the office at 855-3771. Uh, one of them's out on, on the highlands, out past the new road construction. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other one, I think, is off of Bethnal Road on the east side. Okay. <laughs> In those dumps, they can accept natural debris, like uh, tree limbs, leaves. Mm -hmm. But the leaves can't be in bags. They have to be just loose. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, things like that. What they will not accept there is any kind of trash or any kind of um, lumber, anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the remaining, and those are free to POA members, so they can be used at any time. But uh, th the place to dispose of trash would be out off of Highway 71 at the state line. And uh, oh, okay. there is a transfer station for our, our garbage folks up there. Mm -hmm. and uh, they do allow individuals to dump. It's, it's by a fee. Now, I don't know the exact fee mm -hmm. that, uh, that they charge residents of Bella Vista. That kind of varies by company. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's definitely a place you can take your trash and get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know a person asked me the other day, they saw somebody uh, <coughs> burning leaves. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, of course, puts a nice a lot of smoke around right. different people's property and so forth. And then they ask me, is that permittable or permissible? And also the, the question was, they've seen some people who would have a lot of leaves, they'll rake them all down on their docks, and then they just rake them out into the lake. Yeah. Now, is that permissible? You know, I don't know that that's absolutely against the law. I don't, I don't mm. think it's good for the lakes, particularly, yeah. but... Uh, uh, but yes, burning is permissible. Mm -hmm. And uh, every day, the fire department makes a decision as to whether or not burning will be allowed that day. Okay. Uh, the only thing that's allowed to be burned is natural material again, leaves, tree branches, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the only exception to that rule would be at a construction site in a warming barrel if they need to uh, you know, build a fire out of the scraps of wood to kind of keep warm mm -hmm. and have something to contain it in. Mm -hmm. But what people need to do who want to burn their leaves uh, should call our dispatch center and every morning by 8 o'clock we know that um, whether or not burning will be permitted that day. Oh, okay. Uh, we do uh, require that someone be in attendance with the fire, the fire then they can, um, they can call for help if it gets out of hand. Mm, okay. And uh, we do require that they be uh, extinguished before dark. Okay, yeah. okay. But the dispatchers have a whole list they'll go through. If you call in and say, I want to burn my leaves today, they'll, they'll tell you everything you got to do. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you have any questions at all about when and the time yeah. and if it's, is it permissible on that day. Just call 855-3771 after 8 o'clock in the morning and they will know okay. the answer for you. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, read in the newspaper the other day that the police under the activity report indicated that 
there was a couple cows and a, and uh, horses on the roadway. Right. And somebody asked me after they had read that, that uh, is it permissible for, do we have an open range here uh, to, to, to let them wander yeah. around? You know, we don't have open range, mm. uh, but we do occasionally have those problems around the edges of town. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever we're, whenever the city is, is adjoining farmland. Mm. And uh, it is the responsibility of the, uh, of the owner of the livestock to keep those up. So uh, that uh, they can, normally we try to work with them mm -hmm. uh, if, there, if there is an issue, but you know, whenever it comes to, well, we can't work you anymore, then there is a citation that can be written for permitting livestock to run at large. Okay, yeah. okay. And while we're on that subject, someone asked me the other day, said, what kind of animals are you permitted to raise in, in Bella Vista? And what kind are you not allowed to raise? Yeah. I think the only thing that uh, would be permitted as far as what we consider a farm animal uh, is a few chickens. I think uh, either four or six hens are allowed by zoning ordinance mm. and no roosters. Okay. Yeah, no roosters allowed. They, they're a little little raucous sometimes, <laughs> you know, so that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, but could I put up a pig sty out in the back of my house if I wanted to raise a pig? No. Oh. No, okay. that wouldn't be permitted by zoning code. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And when you mentioned the word raucous, I read in the paper too that uh, you were called out to handle a, a raucous party. And I'm not really sure everybody knows what raucous means. Yeah. That's just a, uh, a good loud party. Oh. And it's, we have to deal with those every once in a while. And uh, so normally we try to get them to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully that works. Then I also read about a pit bull being reported that chases some residents as children mm -hmm. uh, every morning. Yeah. And uh, what is your recommendation on handling a situation like that? Uh, call the police department. Okay. Uh, we do have a ordinance that requires uh, dogs be kept on a leash or under the owner's control at all times. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got a, a dog that's out running, particularly one that's acting aggressively, then we need to know about it so we can deal with it. Okay, <clears throat> okay. And then I read in your, your police report too that somebody caught a man putting a goose in his car <clears throat> from over by and around Bella Vista Lake. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether it was just one goose or two gooses or <clears throat> what it was, but uh, is that permitted? Um, you know, the, the geese, the majority of the geese down there mm -hmm. are wild geese. Uh, you can tell the wild geese from, there are some tame geese down there too. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, it, would be, it would be against the law to take that animal uh, any time other than hunting season, mm -hmm. I would think. Uh, but uh, I don't know that I'd want to put a goose in my car. <laughs> they, uh, you know, those things can be mean. <clears throat> yes, I know they can. <laughs> yeah. I've tried to pet them sometimes. Yeah. Uh. <clears throat> And there, there, there is an abundance of them. There, there is abundance of them. You know, uh, the POA has undertaken some uh, population control on those uh, through different things. I don't know if you've ever passed uh, some of the valley courses in the morning, but one of the superintendents down there has a uh, border collie hmm. that runs and uh, harasses the geese, you know, to hmm. try to run them off. Mm -hmm. And they've done some also uh, egg oiling and things like that to help control the population. It seems like the resident population has at least stabilized. Mm -hmm. It, it okay. may not be declining like, like we'd like it to, but it's at least stabilized. Mm -hmm. do, do, do most of those geese uh, stick pretty close to uh, the parks rather than inhabiting where the residences are? You know, we, I think there will be a few of them on some of the, um, some of the residential areas mm -hmm. uh, around the lakes in particular. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like a lot of them congregate at uh, different parks and things just to, uh, number one, they're looking for a handout. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people feed them. Yeah. 
of course, you know that Lake Bella Vista is, is actually inside the city limits of Bentonville down along the highway. Mm -hmm. That part of it, uh, part of the east side, not the lake, but uh, part of the property on the east side is in the city of Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. uh, to the best of my knowledge, I know Bella Vista does, and the, uh, I believe the city of Bentonville also has a city ordinance that prohibits feeding the geese. Oh, okay. And that is, the reason these things were passed is that by feeding them, you tend to take away their natural urge to uh, do their migrations and do the natural thing. Mm -hmm. And whenever, whenever they stay and don't migrate like they're supposed to, that's when they become uh, what we call resident geese, and they, uh, they, they just, that's when they become a problem. Mm -hmm. Is not when they're passing through, but when they decide, hey, it's pretty nice here, we'd like to stay. Yeah, I know sometimes if you drive along Lake Bella Vista over there, <clears throat> many times, <clears throat> at certain times of the year, that whole field there just looks like just it's covered with geese. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I understand that, and I've driven down through South East Arkansas at different times of the year, and especially in the fall or the spring of the year, you'll see flocks of oh, yeah. migrating birds going one direction or the other. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Um, also in a paper I noticed where it said that someone had called the police department and asked the police department to come out and medicate her husband. <laughs> and I w wasn't sure what that really meant and I'm sure there's probably some viewers out there who are wondering about the same thing. Is that, and that is it, you know, if I've got a sick husband or something, can I call the police department to come out? Well, our involvement in that type of situation would be that we uh, dispatch for the ambulance service. Mm. And uh, I, don't, I don't think the ambulance service can show up and medicate at will. Uh, mm. I think, uh, you know, that they have to have a reason. They're, they're allowed to administer drugs in the field, but they have to have a reason for doing so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that, that sounds like a situation where we really wouldn't take any action at all on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another question was asked is, not so much right now, but <clears throat> Sometimes in the spring and during the summer and maybe early fall, people report there's snakes here and there. Yeah. And is it legal in Bella Vista to kill a snake? You know, depending on whether or not that snake is a protected species, uh, you know, there's not anything in our city ordinances or anything mm -hmm. that, that prohibits you from killing a snake. I, I will say that most of the snake bites that are reported happen to people who are trying to harm that snake in some way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, normally if if we've got a snake, uh, we leave it alone. It'll probably go off on its own. Most of them want to avoid people. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do have something that uh, we've had a situation or two where uh, there's been a, a snake that wouldn't leave a place, particularly black snakes. It seems mm -hmm. like they like to find nice, cool places like uh, garages and things, and uh, of course, they're a very beneficial snake. And right. we do have um, our animal control officer can relocate snakes. Uh, we've also had a uh, situation or two involving a rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few timber rattlers around here. Uh, some of them pretty good sized. And uh, we do have one of our detectives uh, is a wildlife biologist by training or by education. And uh, he is always available or usually available to uh, help relocate a snake, even a poisonous snake, when we need to. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, every once in a while you're reading a paper where somebody called the police department and said, there's a snake in my garage or there's one, I found one in my house yeah. or under my house. And I can remember a, a man here in Bella Vista who I, I asked him about it as soon as he opened the door. He said, well, hurry up and come on in. I'll tell you more about it. And uh, <laughs> he said, but he, that's been around a long time. But he said, you know, it's such a good snake takes care of all the mice and all the rodents that are, might be around the house. Yeah. So I never let anybody harm him. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I imagine he was probably four or five feet long. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember whenever I was a, a kid, a small kid, my grandparents lived on a farm. Mm -hmm. And they had a king snake that uh, lived under their front porch. Mm. And they would often, to keep him around, leave little gifts of food and stuff for him, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, some of those snakes can be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, rodents, even other snakes. 
some snakes will eat them and kill and consume poisonous snakes. Yes, so, yes. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I understand. And someone yeah. said that the black snake will take care of a copperhead. Yeah. yeah yes. That's what I've heard. Okay. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's time to talk a little bit about scams. And that seems to be pretty prevalent. And I read in the newspaper the other day, there was a, an item titled, Crimes of Persuasion, it says. And it says that about 20% of American senior citizens report that they have been scammed. And boy, that's a lot of people. It is that's a, lot a lot of people. Of people. And, uh, and I know we get some scam going on here in the Bella Vista area. Yes. So say a little bit about what we might be able to do when we feel that that's going to happen to us or let's make the people a little bit aware of some of those scams that we know that exist here in the village. Yeah, You know, we, we see a lot of scams uh, here in the village. Uh, we have home improvement scams, home cleanup scams, mm -hmm. which tend to happen in the spring and fall. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing to keep in mind on that is that anyone who is doing business in the state of Arkansas with a gross receipt on a project over uh, $2,500 with one individual has to have a contractor's license. Mm -hmm. So that would be something if you have a large project that needs to be done. Another thing I would be wary of is someone who just comes to your house uninvited and just happened to notice that you needed to have this or that done mm -hmm. and wants you to, uh, wants to do it for you. A lot of those individuals will ask for payment up front. And I can say with a great deal of certainty that if you pay someone for a small job up front, your likelihood of getting that job done is very slim. So okay. one thing to keep in mind is, is don't pay up front. You know, if you have a large project, some, some contractors, a lot of contractors on a large project will need draws so that they can get materials and they, mm -hmm. they can pay their workers if it, if it extends over a payday. But a project that's going to take a day or two shouldn't require payment up front. Okay. So that, that would be a red flag. And for those of you out there who don't understand what up front means. That means pay before you receive the service. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, another thing, if anyone is soliciting door to door, uh, with some very minor exceptions, they're required to have a permit from the city to do that. Uh, now, we're not, just because they have a permit does not necessarily mean that the city endorses them mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have a good mechanism right now to deny permits. Uh, but that's something, you know, that is being discussed. It just, changes have to happen in an uh, orderly manner, mm -hmm. you know. So that's, um, that's something to keep in mind is mm -hmm. uh, make sure they have a permit if they just come in door to door. All right. We don't recommend that you do business with someone just coming door to door. All uh, right. That's, uh, you know, that's, uh, there's no reason for that. We have, if you need a service, there are plenty of people in the phone book in Bella Vista that provide that service. Mm -hmm. Just uh, check into it there. Well, uh, you, you mentioned a minute ago that uh, if it's $2,500 or more, they have to have a license. Yes. And so a viewer out there is well within their rights that if somebody gives them an estimate, to ask to see their license. Ask to see their contractor's license, okay. yes. Okay. That's, uh, that's one way to tell whether or not they are at least trying to abide by the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I know that some people have indicated to me that uh, they've received a call, you know, like from Texas or somewhere, mm -hmm. some grandchildren are in jail and they need some money or they're, they're broken down and uh, they've come to the police department down here and they'll need some money for gas to get home and those kinds of things. And right, right away, you know, <laughs> the grandparents will say, oh, is this, is this my grandson, Bill? Oh, yeah, this is Bill. Yeah. yeah. And right away, now they know the name of the grandson. Right. And that is a scam that we do see uh, several times a year. We mm -hmm. have reports of. Uh, we have reports of people buying, being taken by that scam. Mm -hmm. um, one, thing, one thing you need to do is if, if you, uh, and it's hard to do if you get to call in the middle of the night uh, to remember what to say to these people. Mm -hmm. But what you should always do is if your grandson Billy's calling, if he's got trouble, I guarantee you his mom and dad will know about it. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Check on it before you send them money. Uh, okay. Anytime you're asked to send money by Western Union or by a some kind of money gram or a uh, green dot money card, those should be red flags. Okay. Because those items, uh, you take a, a lot of scammers will tell you, well, just go down to Walmart and buy a green dot money card mm. and give me the number off of it. That card can be redeemed anywhere in the world. Uh, they don't have to be where they tell you they're going to be. It's the same thing with Western Union. Uh, Western Union can be redeemed at any Western Union office in the world. So they may not be in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these scams we see come from offshore. Uh, from, oh, yes. From areas, it seems like Nigeria, the country of Nigeria, has uh, pretty lax laws on that sort of thing. So we see a lot of scams coming out of that. Uh, something else to keep in mind is that with today's voice over IP technology, anyone with a high-speed internet connection can buy a device that will allow you to set up a phone number using any area code you want to use. Hmm. So you can have uh, a phone number in um, Nigeria or down in uh, the Caribbean on one of those little islands wow. down there that shows to be a uh, phone number coming out of Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> just like you said, if you ever get a call like this, <clears throat> especially from a relative, right. like, like a grandchild, yeah. get their phone number, tell them you call them back, and then you hang up the phone and call the parents. That's right. And validate. Check on it before you, uh, before you go sending money, particularly by one of those methods. It yes. Just, uh, it often doesn't end well. All right. So that's, uh, well, Ken, do you have any, we got two minutes left, and uh, do you have any outstanding advice you need to give these viewers out there? You know, it's, it's uh, we've been extremely lucky so far on the winter weather. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I don't suspect that that will uh, continue all winter. <laughs> we're, we're bound to have a little problem somewhere. So uh, if we start getting snow and ice, just uh, be sure that you uh, uh, go prepared for it. Give yourself a lot of extra time to get there uh, in that. Another thing we see that, that is just, and I don't know why it happens, but there are a couple or three roads around here that we have to occasionally close mm -hmm. due to winter weather. And we have had people drive around our barricades, move our barricades, oh, wow. tear down our tape, and then they get down there and get stuck on the hill and our officers have to go down and rescue them, you know. So, you know, keep in mind that if, if there is a barricade up on a road, if we've got a road closed, there's a reason we have mm -hmm. that road closed. We're not doing that just to inconvenience people. Okay. And uh, they should, uh, should <coughs> try to avoid that area, take another, another mm -hmm. route. Yes. Well, you don't need to go down and check it out yourself. <laughs> you know, there may be, the entire hill may be covered in cars where you can't get through it. Yes. Or yes. there may be a spot that is so slick that uh, you will have problems navigating it. But there, just keep in mind there is a reason we close those roads and we want to get them open as soon as we possibly can. All right. Yeah. Well, Ken, we've flat out run out of time again. I know next month we will have Tim Cook with us. Right. And if any of you viewers out there still have a question you want us to be sure to ask, call us here at 855-4040. Ken's age and mine. That's right. <laughs> and we'll ask it next month. Thank you for tuning us in today, and thank you for being here, oh, Ken. Oh, thanks, Mill. It's always a pleasure. I asked him about it as soon as he opened the door. He said, well, hurry up and come on in. I'll tell you more about it. And... Uh, <laughs> He said, but he, that's been around a long time, but he said, you know, it's such a good snake, takes care of all the mice and all the rodents that are, might be around the house. Yeah. So I never let anybody harm him. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I imagine he was probably four or five feet long. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember whenever I was a, a kid, a small kid, my grandparents lived on a farm. Mm -hmm. And they had a king snake that uh, lived under their front porch. Mm. And they would often, to keep him around, leave little 
gifts of food and stuff for him, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, some of those snakes can be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, rodents, even other snakes. Some snakes will eat them and kill and consume poisonous snakes. like we've stopped. like we've stopped. like we've stopped.
looks like we've stopped. 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 